weeks ago at the Airbus Summit 2025, where they spent seven hours talking about mainly planes, Airbus showed us what their new Airbus A320 successor could look like. Yes, a single aisle aircraft. Let's take a look at it right now. Very uh, interesting render right here. And it's interesting. Um, the engines don't look like jet engines, no. They announced that they'd be swapping it with this, everybody. Sort of a turboprop looking engine. Very interesting. And because I am Swisser Zero One, I decided to remodel it into the flight simulator. Yes, today we're talking about the future that we're promised in aviation. And we're gonna talk about the concept of an open fan engine. Yes, in the next decades, you will see planes that don't look like this anymore, but like this indeed. This is all part of General Electric's new CFM Rise concept, an engine that's supposed to have the same power as a jet engine, but use 20% less fuel. But let's first talk about how engines have developed over the years. As you might know, they got bigger. I mean, look at old engines. This is a 707 that had the JTAD engines, very small. And aviation people figure okay, we need to make those engines bigger so they can suck in more air. And oh boy, have jet engines got bigger, you know. I like talking about the mighty GE90 engine, which is the same diameter as the fuselage of the 737. Um, Triple Seven really is big. Why? Because the bigger the engine, the more fuel efficient it is. Look at all that air this guy can suck in and look at all the fuel it can save. But there is one major drawback of these engines getting bigger and that's of course that they've also gotten heavier. You know, the huge casing around it isn't necessarily lightweight at all. And yes, while it is true, the huge fuel saving that this GE90 can do over old engines still overpower, you know, jet fuel efficiency from old engines like this, which were much lighter, there is a way to improve this design. And that is by completely getting rid of the casing. And that is genuinely what the CFM rides is all about to explain it briefly. We have right here a proper jet engine that doesn't have a case. Um, and that is supposed to make the jet engine a lot, lot more fuel efficient. Now, this is a very hyped up project and I think it does deserve the hype, but the idea of removing this jet engine casing to make it lighter isn't new at all. The concept used to be called an unducted fan and um, this was a thing in the 80s. This is a video from GE and Snegma. Uh, engine manufacturers and how it would work is you'd have a jet engine indeed and we have these two blades here that rotate opposite to another this one clockwise this one counterclockwise which are able to bring this engine the power it needs the two fans are powered directly by non-geared counter rotating turbines the counter rotating action allows the second fan to straighten the swirl of air caused by the first fan and that contributes to the engine's efficiency. But the problem was, and this is why in the 80s and 90s this project was eventually scrapped, that this engine was extremely loud. It caused a lot of vibration. You know this whole thing of these two blades here spinning opposite of another just didn't really work out at all which is why we stuck with jet engine still but the cfm rise project is interesting here i have a little animation of the wind blowing through and we can see yes while this forward blade does spin the blades behind it do not they are actually fixed here's a bit of a crazy render from cfm international here we can see inside of the engine looks like a normal jet engine indeed and we can see yes the forwards blade spinning here the CFM project can be powered with hydrogen, apparently. And just like turboprop engines that we've known for quite a few years, the blade angles here can actually change their pitch, you know, to make it more efficient. But not only can they change pitch, and this is the whole point of these blades behind, they change pitch as well. And yes, you may wonder, well, what's the point of, of this then? This, this doesn't even spin in the back. The blades in the back are just made to direct the airflow of the engine properly to make it, you know, best efficient you know, especially with the, you know, wind blowing over the wings. That's the, literally the only point of these blades here in the back. So what we're seeing is kind of a more powerful version of a turboprop. Um, 
that weighs less and so consumes less fuel and is more efficient and all that crazy stuff. I would like to fly it now. So I've generally just hooked these engines up to an A321 and I'm not even sure if they fly. All we know is that the CFM Rise engines can span up to four meters big. The fan diameter is quite a lot bigger than the normal A321 engines and that they can produce pretty much the same amount as the CFM 56 engine of thrust. Let's test out this stuff. So um, come on, turn on the APU right here. Yes, by the way, now now I've completely removed the wind, which is why here, now these engines are stand still. Yes, and we've got power. Now, obviously the new A320 series would have greatly upgraded cockpit. And now that we turned on the APU bleed air, so the air is provided to the engine for startup, we can just actually just start this engine up. Come on, engine number two, turn on. Which is something I can't do here. Hello, because I've messed up how the engines are started up. Let's just go ahead and start it this way here. Okay, there we go. That's the way to do it. <laughs> All right, I'm sorry. Okay, now we have our CFM Rise engines running. Now I've kind of messed up the animation here. It's supposed to be a little bit blurry here from the ro engines rotating this fast. We can hear now what I feel like this airplane could sound like. We have a bit of a mix of jet engine noise and turboprop noise. Not bad at all. Now let's see, let's give it a little bit of power. And we can now start taxiing. All right, let's get onto the runway. This is all fine. We've already, we are already saving 20% of fuel. Oh God, the instrument, this is a mess. This is a very bad flight. And yes, while this may look a bit cursed, it works perfectly fine. Now I think this engine, because it's marketed as that smart, it's no harder to manage than a normal jet engine, so you just have a throttle lever right here, and the blades pitch change automatically. For example, in real life, if we were to go in full power, these blades here would straighten up, whereas these would be unfeathered in a way for it to get maximum power. Let's go ahead and get full power indeed. Come on, let's see how these jet engines fly now. Come on, full power. Yes, you can do it. All right, we are moving. We are, instruments are dead. 100 knots in these free turbine engines, 130 knots. So we have, yes, once again, very equal amounts of power here to the normal A321. And well, as you can see, this airplane is really fast now. No trouble at all. We are able to climb nicely. We can even put the landing gear up, of course. Look at that. Yeah, I've fixed the airplane's instrument now, as you can see. And we're able to climb at very, very high vertical speed. This is very good. Yes, equal power. So no, this is not a turboprop that has to fly at max, like what, 25,000 feet, where the weather is worse. No, this is a fully fledged jet airliner, which can even fly at 35,000 feet. CFM themselves say that this plane can cruise at Mach 0.8 here, so no trouble at all. No performance deficiency. We can turn on the autopilot and the plane won't notice anything at all. Absolutely no worries. There's other advantages that I can think of with this plane. For example, let's think about bird strikes. Let's go ahead and have both engines bird strike, no problem. And because we don't have huge fans or anything that can suck in birds and get damaged, Okay, yes, we do have blades. We have a smaller likelihood of both engines being damaged in case of a bird strike indeed. Here we go. We just had one. Plane doesn't care. <laughs> doesn't care at all. <laughs> That's funny. This is kind of what I'm talking about here, right? But when we come to, you know, risks and danger, there's one thing that I cannot really get out of my mind. Obviously, the diameter of this engine is a bit bigger than normal CFM engines, and the blades are not as well protected compared to having them have a housing surrounding them. What I mean by that is that, well, what happens if you strike those engines? Something I, I guess could happen. Have you ever been to Madeira Airport? I mean, while I set these engines to be quite high up, they're not extremely high up. Uh, look at that landing gear. Let's do a bit of a prop strike here on these big engines. God, this kind of looks cursed. I can't... I can't um, really get used to it. Either way, here's the runway. Let's uh, do a very bad landing now. Let's try outside view and just hitting that... You, you know, just a bit of that. You know, I mean, then, you know, when it comes to engine separation or even uh, engine explosion, you'd be kind of cooked as a passenger. I don't want to have that blade flying into the cabin. All right, let's take a look. Come on, let's do let's do something stupid now. All right, there you go. Okay. Boom. Okay. For some reason, that th did that animate? Well, now it did. So we lost that. We lost that one engine now. That happens. Uh, yeah, so that's what I'm kind of thinking. Now, something that is unique about the CFM Rise is that it doesn't have any 
beta. What I mean by that is it doesn't have any reverse thrust. No, this plane does not feature reverse thrust now at all. I mean, it thinks it does. Yes, this engine would not have reverse thrust. How would it work then? Well, in real life, these blades right here would move to an angle where we'll completely build a wall from practically, that will turn the engine into an air brake. Now, I can't simulate that because this is not animated. This is a very poorly done model, to be honest. But yes, this is a very potent air brake, to be honest. But we'll be able to make this airplane stop in no time. But for now, with this modeling that I've done, a botched job, Stopping this plane is not easy, but I will say please take all this with a grain of salt. We don't know enough about this engine to be honest to make a proper flight and model out of it. But I think this is a pretty okay start here. Let's go ahead and try to land our new CFM Rise A320. Starting to, you know what, maybe I'm starting to get used to the looks. All right, we're gonna land a little bit slower. Now that we don't have much reverse thrust, we don't have any reverse thrust at all. Oh my god, that was a hard landing. Let's go ahead and stop. Full power into the stopping now, into the brakes. That's the only thing we can use to stop except of the air brakes here. Come on, come on, come on. Yes, planes are a bit weaker without the reverse thrust. Let's go full power. Come on, A321. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, there we go. He's in full braking, kind of does the job here still. So this is quite exciting. Now, airplane manufacturers, they can talk a lot. They can do very basic renders, but I'm obviously waiting for a real CFM Rise engine to be made and to be put on an aircraft. This will be very interesting also to see, does the engine vibrate or create a million tons of noise? So that we scrap the whole open fan project once again. I don't know. So thank you guys so much for watching this video, and I'll see you guys tomorrow as always. Good night. And a special thanks goes out to my members, my supporters, <laughs> Guns Killer, R27, James Deram, that dude, Anime Gods of Gaming, Derek, Insider Plane, Nishitsu Finer, Professional Jamal, Ryland Williams, and New the York. You've got beautiful names.